All right, welcome everyone to this weekly Wednesday webinar delivered by Stork. My name is Savannah Hans, and I'm a consultant with Asset Management Technology, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. Thank you for taking the time to dial in. We live in really interesting times, making us all reevaluate the choices that we make in our daily lives. So all the more reason to, um, to thank you for taking the time to dial in today. From our side, of course, we're happy to share our knowledge with you, and we hope that it can help you navigate this current crisis situation. Of course, due to this crisis, many of us are working from home still, so you may see some less than business backgrounds behind the speakers, so we hope you understand that. To avoid any static background noises, we've turned all of the microphones off. However, we do really want to hear the questions that you may have during the presentation. So if you have questions, please just click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and type your question in there. And if there's time, we'll address some of those at the end of the webinar. As we wait for people to dial in, let me start off with just a really quick introductory slide on Stork, just to give those of you who don't know us a better idea about who we are and what we do. This will also help put into perspective the main presentation that will be given today. So Stork is a global provider of fully integrated operations and maintenance, turnarounds, modifications, and asset integrity solutions. So we're not necessarily an asset owner, but we do feel absolutely committed to keeping assets running at peak performance during all phases of that asset's life cycle. So without further ado, please let me introduce the topic for today. The roadmap toward a more industry 4.0 driven organization. Every organization has heard of this industry 4.0 revolution, but what exactly is this fourth revolution? Is it just about adding a few sensors? Well, sensors certainly play a part, but if you want to realize the full benefits of industry 4.0, you have to get the whole organization ready. So which is, that is exactly the topic of today. So here to share some insights with you on how to do this effectively and what steps to take, we have Joe Grande and Ludolf Pipker. Joe is an experienced maintenance veteran with over 40 years experience, 34 of those with Floor Stork in asset reliability, and he's also an SME in data analytics and industry 4.0 for Stork. Ludolf is a senior consultant at Stork Asset Management Technology, and he's been working for Stork for 17 years. He's accumulated over 25 years experience in the field of asset management within the process industry. He is also a subject matter expert in the area of data analytics. I wish you all an inspiring and educational half hour. Joe, Ludolf, the floor is yours. Thank you, Savannah. So what you've heard in the is the title, but now let's look at the agenda. I'm gonna first start talking off, but with a quick grounding of what industry 4.0 is all about. It's a term that's used for many things, but a little definition is warranted. We'll embark on a four-step roadmap that starts with an assessment phase to determine the as-is situation. This phase is followed by determining the, the envisioned to-be situation and agree to how quickly we want to achieve that situation. Next, we'll talk about the implementation phase, which we'll see is about applying change management. And while it's tempting to be lured into a proprietary silver bullet processes and tooling, you'll hear at Stork, we prefer tried and true methodologies to industry standards when possible. Ultimately, it comes down to the harvest phase, expressed in reduced downtime, improved operational equipment efficiency. However, to ensure that these benefits are sustained, it's imperative continuous improvement principles are applied here. And by the way, we will ask you a little bit about a poll question later on on how Industry 4.0 ranks in your organization. So before we delve into Industry 4.0, let's quickly reflect on Industry 1, 2, and 3.0 to give a little historical perspective. Industry 1.0 was the industrial revolution where we worked from manual production to steam and water powered production methods. Stork roots go back to 1827 and we were fully part of this. You can see boilers being built to power the industrial revolution. As a matter of fact, Stork still manufactures boilers and at the moment 90% of China's deaerators 
are built upon stork technology. Industry 2.0 was a revolution around transportation, extensive rail systems, and telegraph networks. This allowed people and ideas to travel much faster around the world. Stork was involved here making large ship diesel engines and locomotives. The electrical calculator ushered in industry 3.0, the digital revolution. But let's not kid ourselves. The computing power of the Cray supercomputer in the 70s is about as powerful as the little birthday chip, the little chip in the birthday card that can sing happy birthday to you. The foundation were laid also of the internet. This was the period Stork moved from a manufacturer to services industries. You can see us servicing a turbine in the same location where we once used to build one from scratch. Industry 4.0 is a whole different ball game. So let's take a look at this one more closely. There are many definitions in Industry 4.0 and let's take one of them. The Wikipedia defines Industry 4.0 as follows. Industry 4.0 is the fourth industrial revolution that encompasses a combination of traditional manufacturing and industrial platforms and practices with the latest smart technology and primarily focuses on large scale machine to machine and internet of thing deployments to provide increasing automation, improved communication, self monitoring, as well as smart machines that can analyze and diagnose it without the need for human intervention. Well, that's rather complex. And at Stork, we like to keep them simple. So we're gonna talk about sensors that we have at our disposal today that are amazing, tiny, accurate, durable, and cheap. Connectivity, which is pervasive and increasing in strength in Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LAN, 4G, and soon 5G. Storage capacity today is dirt cheap and abundantly available in data centers all around the world. Then we have new varieties of hardware at our disposal, desktops, laptops, handheld devices, wearables, and the like. And on these hardwares are even larger amount of software systems and databases, ranging from Microsoft products to 3D CAD systems. All of these things we'd like to summarize as smart work, allowing us to generate and share masses of data, thereby enabling us to work more efficiently. The whole new category of software tools that have recently emerged that allows us to manipulate the massive amounts of data from different sources derive valuable insights. AI or artificial intelligence, machine learning are just two of these powerful tools that are out there that allow us to make data smart. Hence the name, the second component, smart data. But the revolution doesn't end there. A fool with a tool is still a fool. So you'll need to invest in the people and create smart people. It's not that we didn't have smart people in the past, but we need different smarts going forward. You need to recruit differently. You need to retrain everyone. You need to refine many more roles and responsibilities if you wanna harness the smart data. And before you think this is just about hiring a bunch of geeky data scientists, no, the whole management team needs to be engaged right from the top and in all disciplines because only then can you capitalize on industry 4.0 and create a smart business. In this presentation, we'll be referring to these four areas as special attention areas. So one of the things we want to do in, is know where 4.0 strategy is in your organization. In a few seconds, you're gonna see a poll come up on your screen and we'd like you to rank your organization your organization from no formal program, uh, has it been a priority or is it hasn't been as mentioned as a strategic vision? Management is aware, but not articulated, communicated the strategy, but seen as the improvement program of the month or has stakeholder support in moving forward with a budget been established? So once you vote, we will get the uh, and tabulate the results And we will give those to you as soon as they are available. So the answers we got, no formal program comes in at right around 20%. Management has plans but not articulated is over 30%. 
having a communicated strategy, but no buy-in is at 14% and communicated with employee buy-in is at 33%. So about 66% of you have less than optimal 4.0 strategies and are working towards a strategy uh, minus the 20% that have no formal program. So moving forward, we stayed at quite a high level that's independent of industry, but let's go one level deeper in industry, the maintenance industry. Let's compare the differences between industry 3.0 and industry 4.0. Industry 3.0 only uses traditional methods of predicting asset failures, which may lead little lead time before failure happens. And when a failure does happen, we have to assess the future excuse me, address the failure, determine the root cause, and then scramble to plan people, tools, spares, and remediate the situ situation. This all takes a lot of time and, and emergency repairs cost a lot more money as we know. Then let's look at industry 4.0. Here we use plant data to create machine learnings to predict failure 30 to 60 days in advance and autonomous maintenance practices decreasing downtime by as much as 50%. Apart from predictive maintenance, we can also move to prescriptive maintenance. It doesn't just predict a failure, but it also tells you how to remediate it, automatically order spare parts, tools, and schedules in the people to make it happen. Then it's just a matter of mobilizing the people and making the precision overhauls just in time. For those who didn't watch Stork's previous webinar of the Formula One pit stops, I highly recommend you watch it. You have the pit stop team ready to go and do only the essential maintenance. All in all, what we're saying here is that the mean time to repair is strongly reduced, allowing asset owners to produce and sell a lot more product. Okay, so much for definitions. What we're going to move on to now is the assessment phase and how these phases work towards giving you a solution of industry 4.0 in your organization. So we're going to move on to the assessment. What are the key ingredients to any assessment? The first is to have a good trained facilitator. This facil facilitator will bring along with him checklists that he takes you through. These checklists will include all techniques out there, including traditional methods. For many of the 4.0 methods might sound, <coughs> might, might sound like black box and that's okay. This is not much unlike tools of the 1980s, which were also seen as black box technologies. Now new technologies like artificial intelligence combined with data analytics, IOT, digital twins, automated MRO, remote inspections, and repairs are seen as black box methods to many, but then again, that's okay. As long as your facilitator can lead you through the process and assess whether you have them or not, and as he or she goes through the list, the, the status is noted. Typically, we use terms like non-existent, defined, planned, partially developed, or fully developed, that then gives you a colorful overview of the as-is situation. As already, <clears throat> so more than bits and bytes as already highlighted in our areas of concern, in order to capitalize on industry 4.0, you need to look just beyond, look, look beyond just the hardware and software. You also have to assess the core IT process infrastructure cabling, Wi-Fi, and instrumentation. Do you have the data knowledge in-house? Are you aware and aligned that the key stakeholders on benefits, are they, do they truly believe in them? Has your management make them a priority? Remember the poll question we asked at the start. And your management team, have they bought in? But have all the disciplines bought in? You don't want any fence sitters that are maliciously compliant people. During the assessment, you will already you will also need to know the surface the surface sentiments around data sharing and the possibility of other touchy issues. Looking ahead a little now, how well staffed are you to implement the required changes? So 
So upon completion of the assessment phase, we're gonna move into the roadmap phase. And my colleague, Ludolf, is going to take you through this phase and the remainder of the presentation. Ludolf, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, uh, Joe. Um, this is the, the the second phase, the second step in the in the in the, the roadmap for industry um, readiness. So um, let's see what this phase is all about. And this is all about clearly articulating the mission and vision. Uh, what is the desired to be situation? A uh, good benchmark will help you assess uh, where you're weak and where you're quite okay. And this really allows you to determine the right focus areas. You can't do everything anyway, but certainly not all at once but you have to create the roadmap with realistic time schedules. So as mentioned at the start, we, uh, we review all four areas of attention, smart data, smart work, smart business, and smart people. Joe gave a, a good insight in, that, uh, in those four attention areas. And to make it a little bit more practical, uh, let's look at an example. So here's this example of a roadmap developed for a customer with a vision to create a more autonomous operating plant. Although it looks straightforward, um, it's take quite some time to articulating that vision because it, tuned, it turned out that uh, key stakeholders and different, uh, different pet projects and they wanted to slide in. And uh, that would be very time consuming. So, we then held several workshops with the client to define the four key focus areas. And for each focus area, we agreed on key deliverables, as you can see on this slide. In this case, you can see that the smart data uh, had key focus, but on uh, the people side, it was quite interesting to see that they were actually in quite good shape. It was on smart work, smart data, and smart business that they needed help. To um, the defined steps and uh, deliverables are set out in a time schedule and work groups are formed with one or more deliverables to make. Uh, depending on the current uh, position of the organization and impl implementation is not done very quickly, of course, you can imagine. It takes some time, also because change management is often involved. Organization and people have to change. And we have proven solutions to assist you in that. Um, Upon completion of the uh, roadmap phase, we can move on to the implementation phase, the next phase. Um, keeping in mind the areas of attention and the roadmap um, that is developed in the previous steps, the most typical steps to perform in the implementation phase are shown over here. The right group of people have to be selected or recruited. The work groups that are formed should work on the deliverables. And we use often the scrum methodology to do this in a structural way. It helps a lot to have certain deliverables in time. There are some relation between the deliverables and you have to um, take them into account. And of course, at, at a certain point, some tryouts or proof of concepts um, will be launched to check if we are on the right track and, and meet the expectations. It's also very important to inform the people what is done and train people in adapting to the changes. So talk about, talking about changes, so how large is the impact on the organization and which department will have an impact on this? I think a better question is which department will have no impact on these changes because at the end, every department will have an impact one way or on the other. Uh, knowledge must be captured, more collaboration, collaboration across the plant is needed, um, shift of personnel um, from workflow management towards automation and data analytics. Uh, routine tasks will be more uh, digitalized and software system will help to accomplish that. So going one step down and looking at the shop floor as an example shown in this sheet, the decision making will be more based on a prediction model. Um, there will be less manual planning, uh, but automated generation of work requests within CMS system, that's the maintenance management system like SEP. And the work package developers have systems available that quickly generates uh, our work package with all the preparation in it to start to work. Slowly, a digital twin is revealed, a digital copy of your actual plant. And um, at night, uh, a complete autonomous plant is operational, for instance. 
Also within engineering and projects, uh, software is introduced and the selection of asset is based on a technical requirements based on industry 4.0. Uh, projects that has been done uh, will be evaluated based on the analytics to improve lead time and, and saving costs. So data is also used not only for maintenance and process, but also in the performing of projects and engineering activities to improve. Another thing we liked uh, to highlight is that there are a lot of standards out there. They're tried and tested and the art is more, do you know what are the standards uh, and whether or not it's applicable to the assets uh, at hand, or if so, how to apply it. Take for example, this ISA 95, uh, which helps to integrate the production automation systems with office systems. On the left side, um, you can um, see the different levels of automation and on the right side, the information level that is applicable. For example, uh, at the left side, uh, on level zero, zero and one, um, there are field equipment located with the instrumentation around it. And these assets generate process data information that mostly will be shown in the SCADA DCS system and stored as an historian. The question came to us, what are the minimum requirements for these field equipment? to become more industry 4.0 ready. And we have defined these requirements and, and, and also the must have and the nice to have sensors around these field equipment based on a questionnaire and available standards regarding to maintainability, security, connectivity and installations, installation. And we have developed an automated process to define the minimum requirements for typical based on these four topics. This process, what I talked about, uh, looks like this. Uh, starting with a questionnaire, selecting the typical, and, uh, and then getting the most, the must-have and the nice-to-have sensors with the minimum requirements for the selected assets related to maintainability, security, connectivity, and installation. And it helps the purchaser a lot to decide which assets, which field equipment will fit the best in order to meet uh, the mission and the vision about being uh, more industry 4.0 ready. And so here we can see the questionnaire giving uh, to the current status, um, giving the current status, and then per typical, the must have and the nice to have sensors are defined as an, uh, as an output. And the questionnaire is all about what's the existing um, IT landscape, uh, what's wireless and not wireless, what are the, the, the protocols that are preferred, uh, is it, um, um, yeah, quite a new factory or is this an, an existing factory? That kind of questions. And, and then per area, like I said, the maintainability, security, connectivity, and installation, the minimum requirements are listed. Again, this helps the purchaser if and how the assets should meet the demands uh, in order to be industry 4.0 ready, as, uh, as stated in a roadmap. So this example uh, shows that um, this automated process can help you to, to, to be a little bit on level zero and one already industry 4.0 ready. Um, often clients will say, okay, we are done. We have implemented uh, everything and let's now focus on some other things. This is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. There must be a phase four um, you, because you want to harvest sustainable uh, failure over time. And it's not rocket science, um, but again, it's often uh, forgotten, which can really impact the return on all your investments. And this, this is not about bits and bytes. Uh, it's all about uh, celebrating early uh, successes with your team, uh, creating excite, uh, excitement, for example, about the results of your proven concepts, uh, ensuring the commitment, uh, keep training your resources, keep looking for new ways to integrate uh, data and use new tools uh, that are uh, on the market. And this development of tools and artificial intelligence is going really fast. And uh, continuously learn from ex experience, uh, leveraging it from one asset to another and set KPIs and keep learning. So again, not, not rocket science, but really important to taking into account this, uh, this four step. So if you really follow, truly follow this four step process and, and, and are, they, they are really realistic in your, in your, in your, if you are realistic in your goals and your schedules, then it's our experience that the rewards are certainly there. 
We have seen, for instance, a 5 to 10% cost reduction in inventory, a 2 to 6% increased uh, availability, 10 to 40% reduction in costly uh, reactive maintenance, 3 to 35% decrease in safety incidents, 5 to 20% workforce productivity increases, and 10 to 50% lifespan extension. Unfortunately, not all at the same time, you can imagine, um, though often multiple of these KPIs are, um, are achieved. So a little bit behind my clicks, but uh, you can see here the, the, the rewards that can be achieved. The most seen savings uh, are the reducing of uh, unplanned downtime, but savings are not limited to maintenance, of course. There's also process optimization possible, for instance, defining the best operating window, optimized process settings and energy savings uh, that are also potential benefits. Okay, this nearly concludes our journey to become an industry 4.0 organization. Uh, let me just summarize that what we have discussed. We started off with some definitions, including the highlights of the, highlighting the four areas, uh, the key areas of attention. Um, and then we made the first step by assessing uh, the SE situation. And we then determined the ambition and schedule um, and laid out it out in the, in the roadmap uh, with clear focus areas and deliverables. Then in phase three, we talked about the four pillars that can help achieve a sound implementation. And finally, we talked about applying a good continuous improvement in order to harvest uh, the benefits year over year. So this concludes our presentation. Um, there might be some questions left for, uh, I think there's some time left for questions. So I give it back to you, Safana. All right, thank you so much, Joe and Ludolf for this presentation um, on Industry 4.0. I know I certainly learned a lot and we have had a number of questions come in. Um, we have just a couple minutes left, so I think um, we can take some time to answer one or two. Um, I just want to remind everyone that if your question does not get asked and answered during the webinar, we will be answering all of these questions and sending it out to everyone in the follow-up material. So be on the lookout for that. So just to look at some questions asked here, the first one I'd like to ask is, what, what is data analytics and how can it work in my plant? Yes, the data analytics is, is all about analyzing uh, raw data and making, in order to make some information, to get some information out of it. Um, it, it can be done in different kind of ways too. And you could use machine learning for that. And, um, and for instance, in your plant, you can make a, do a predictive uh, analysis to trying to predict you know, the state of your, your assets, but also, like I said, um, to evaluate your, um, your, your information about uh, the, the pro projects you have done to uh, improve and to uh, see if you can cut some costs, for instance. So it's all about uh, using data, raw data, to make information out of it. What can we learn from it? And there are different kinds of techniques for. OK, thank you very much. I think we have a time for just one more question. So let's see. I'll take this one. How does Industry 4.0 technology communicate with site personnel? Uh, Savannah, I'll take that one. Um, the new uh, software systems in Industry 4.0 fully integrate with the uh, most uh, site systems. If you have an ERP system, if you have an email system, uh, these new solutions of these uh, uh, Industry 4.0 uh, software systems typically will uh, hook up and generate work orders, notifications, uh, could email you. It could, uh, it, it, they can do at the level of notification uh, that you want to set it up at. But uh, irregardless, they can, they can send uh, without human in intervention, a notification into the maintenance work stream and get attention to assets that are in need of attention. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. So we are now at the 30 minute mark. So I would like to go ahead and conclude this webinar. Um, I hope you've all gained some valuable insight into Industry 4.0 and how to get your organization ready for that. Of course, 
we would be happy to discuss any more of this with you directly. I know there have already been some people um, reaching out for more information. If you do have further questions or want more information, we're going to leave the presentation open for just a few more minutes to give you time to go ahead and click that Q&A button. Um, leave us your question, leave us your contact details, and we'd be happy to get back with you. As I mentioned before, this webinar is part of our series of weekly Wednesday webinars about smart maintenance and asset management related topics. And I hope you can all join us next Wednesday. We'll be here at the same time talking about managing the COVID-19 risk and just this new normal that we're living in today. More information can be found um, and also registration on our website, stork.com. And just a reminder that this presentation and the recorded webinar will be available on the Stork website and all registered attendees will be sent the link to that in the coming days. So be on the lookout for that. I'd like to just thank you all once again for taking time out of your day to join us. I wish you a safe and productive rest of your day. And as always, we continue to be your partner in the, in the field of smart maintenance and asset performance improvement. I hope to see you next week.